I'm just like so psyched for this weekend because I'm going to be hanging out with my bestie who I haven't seen in months. What big plans do you boys have? Listen, I'm wanting to catch the Golden Bachelor. I, 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 I'm i not sure if it was on, is it tonight <laughs> or last night? I got to catch oh, this. I, hope I so. want to see the Golden uh, Bachelor. I hope it's tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you. <laughs> I, I, I spoke to my wife about the Golden Bachelor. She's, she was looking at the uh, ad that they're running, and she goes, what is this? The Golden Bachelor. He's 72 years old. The Golden Bachelor. It's ridiculous. I said, I already said on the air, I predict this is going to be one of the biggest hits of the year. And she yeah. said, have you lost your mind? I said, no, 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 no. I mean, just, just step back. If you're an older person, let's say you're an older woman, you're just not going out and hitting the clubs like you did 30 years ago, right? Or 40 years ago. So, um, you know, I think there's going to be a, a draw of a certain uh, generation to watch this. And I think the number is going to be enormous. And well, he seems like a nice enough guy from the ads. His name is Gary. He's from Indiana. He seems, I, I mean, I'm sorry. He just seems like a lamb to the slaughter in the Bachelor franchise. Um, I DVR'd it because it. <laughs> It premiered last night, and I was in an event last night. So Ooh, I will. Um, I gotta go back. I will. I go back. You're gonna have to catch it on uh, demand. Yes. Because you guys, you guys were too busy working last night to realize that Gary got served up for the very first time, and I think it's going to be interesting because we talked about this on the show. The producer said that they thought that the Golden Bachelor was going to go one way, but he said the the one line producer said the women. The women who are competing for the Golden Bachelor, they don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't wait for the rest of this season. Okay, but here's the deal. The first show is going to take – the first show will be huge. There will be a ton of people tune in. If – depending on how they handle it, then the second and third shows will be fine. But if they mess this up, I mean, this has got to have a different flavor than the normal Bachelor. It's got to have a little bit of a different flavor. It just really does. I think. And, and let when us you hope said, when you said the women don't sleep, what? Why don't they? they don't, is it menopause? They're they're, they're drinking all night. Or what is it? Nah, they're post menopause. They're done sleeping. Thermos They've gotten all the sleep they high. need in this lifetime. Yeah, they're done with that nonsense. <laughs> and as far as the Golden Bachelor having a different flavor, listen, every other season tastes like penicillin, so anything's going to be. You got to admit, though, it's a audience. great name. This is going to be a different. It's a different audience that they've never had oh, yeah. before. I believe yeah. it's going to watch this. I really do. I, I think mean, it's going. You know, you can have a number one show, whether it's radio or television, if you really dominate yes. one group of people. And I think that this show is going to do that. I could be wrong, and we will see when I, the, no, when the numbers come out. I I was thinking about um, my mom when I was watching. It was like. Wednesday night, like two nights ago, I'm watching something and a, pr a promo comes up for The Golden Bachelor. And when my stepdad died, my mom is a beautiful woman and so charming and smart and interesting, right? And when my stepdad died, um, that was about a year later and I was out visiting her in Utah and I was like, mom, do you think that you'll ever want to date again or maybe even get married again? I mean, you're, you're still so young and vibrant and my mom looked at me and said, absolutely not. I never, ever, ever want to feel the touch of another man. And I remember being <laughs> taken aback by that. Taken aback because, I mean, she and Ted had like really, a, a, it was a beautiful love story. I was so glad that, that she had that in her life. And I'm like, really? Because you and Ted? And my mother said, never. Another man will never be in this house. And I was like, wow, that's really, wow. But, you know, that was a few years ago. And now, if you were to ask me that same question, this would be me. What? I will never again feel the touch of another man. <laughs> it's Bob and Cherry's. I believe this shit. I cannot believe this shit. All right, we're going to call this the Date Me Dozen. The 12 biological, chemical, physiological things that drive attraction. So this has nothing to do with how much money you make or how much status you have, the car you drive, the house you live in. And we're going to start with the first of the date me dozen, smell. And this is not like the smell of your soap or your perfume or your cologne. 
we are attracted to certain people because we're of their smell that speaks to us and maybe us alone. And yeah, they, they smell good. They smell like cinnamon or, you know, gasoline or whatever it is that turns you on. But it's really weird the way that smell drives attraction. The second hmm. date me doesn't is taste because when people kiss each other on the mouth, they transfer about 80 million bacteria. Mm. Yeah, buddy. And kissing allows your body to determine if you have different immune responses because we tend to feel the most attracted to someone with very different immune responses. And I love kissing, but it is the, when you when you step back, it really is the strangest thing, isn't it? Well, Let especially if so you're germophobic. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, it's really good. Like the first time I was probably maybe 12 when someone explained French kissing to me. And I was like, first of all, <laughs> ew. Second, I am not doing that until I'm married. So yeah, I was a late bloomer. Um, the third of the, <laughs> the third of the date me dozen is diet. What you eat impacts how attractive you are. There was a little study done back in 2017 that found that women were very attracted to sweaty men who ate diets high in fruits and vegetables, much more so than men who ate a lot of refined carbs like pasta and bread. Yeah. Yeah, you sweaty. I'm glad I caught one. The ladies love you. (laughs) I'm glad I caught one because I'm not that first guy at all. (laughs) Number four is fertility in the date me dozen. And I know you're thinking, well, how am I supposed to know what fertility is? Because you remember how we talked about your body transmitting 80 million different bacteria in a kiss? Well, um, we can kind of detect certain things about each other. And it's not, you know, it's not 100%, right? But there's something to do with um, a man and a woman's fertility, especially during different periods of the cycle, that really is magnetic. Hormones are number five. And you know, like, you know what those are, hormones and pheromones. So men with high levels of testosterone tend to be attracted to women with really big eyes and high eyebrows and smaller jaws because it's like the opposite, right? And mm-hmm. then, of course, there's um, serotonin, the happy hormone, and oxytocin, the love hormone. All of that is part of it. Kindness is a biological attractor. When people have positive character traits, like they're kind or they're generous, they're altruistic, that is a huge turn on. So let's say you just met him or her and you, and you're walking and you're talking and the date's going pretty well and you have a chance to help an old lady get her groceries into the car. Buddy, you go do that. You go do that right now. I totally, that's very attractive. I totally get that. And really that circumstance is pretty rare, but you know, it's not. Uh, how you treat a server in a restaurant on a date. Um, so if you're kind to somebody who's bringing you, you know, some clam chowder and, and a sandwich, or if you're a jerk, it, it says a lot about you. Oh, it says everything about you. Yeah. Um, voices. Voices. Women tend to prefer men with lower voices because there's like this link in our brains that deeper voices are somehow associated with bigness and strongness and the ability to produce healthy offspring. But, you know, men are not necessarily attracted to really high falsetto voices. So it's your voice. And everybody hates their own voice. Everybody hates the sound of their voice. Just let that go. Life is so hard and short and miserable. Don't be worried about that. Um, Another one is like being very similar. But the next one is being super different because that kind of opposites attract can be a thing. And Um, over and there are more, and I'm going to post all of these up on the Bob and Sherry Facebook so you can go look at them. But really there's a lot more that goes into attraction than the superficial things that you're conscious of. Like I like her because I like redheads or I I like him because, um, he wears like really great suits or whatever your personal thing is. A lot of it is out of your control. What do you think? Oh, I think it's what you uh, have been telling us is completely true. And I've just remembered a a moment. I may have mentioned this to you once before 
One of the first concerts I ever saw was, I was 15 years old and I saw The Temptations, one of the great Motown acts of all time. So there's five guys, right? They have a guy that sings high and a little falsetto, and then they got the medium guys, and they have a guy named Otis, and he sings bass. So in the middle of the show, they stop and they say, we'd like to introduce you to the members of The Temptations. And it starts off with one guy and then another, David Ruffin, and goes down. And the final guy that says uh, who he is and says hello to the audience was the Otis guy. And he went, hello, it's good to be here. And you could hear the women in the audience go, ooh. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. It is talk back time. If you would like to talk to the show, you can call us on the phone like people did in the olden times in the 90s at 844-52-SHERRY. That's 844-52-SHERRY. Or if you have our app and you don't, you can grab it in the um, Google Play and Apple stores. It's free. It does a gazillion things. You can listen to the show and the podcast and text the show and enter contests. And you can tap a little microphone in the bottom center of the screen and talk and the app will do the rest. Uh, you guys, honestly, this is Heather. I'm a listener for years and years and years. But I just want to tell you where I'm at now. I am at the stage of my life where I am using the term hard pants. I'm on vacation and I used the term hard pants. Bob, I hope you're happy. Anyway, love you guys. Keep up the awesome work. I appreciate you. I've never heard a woman use that term before. Have you? You have always wanted to be inside a woman's head. And now you are. How's it feel? How's it feel? Does it feel good? Uh, it mixed, uh, mixed emotions uh, based on that call, to be honest with you right there. Um, what are hard pants for a woman? I, I mean, for a men, for men, it's anything that's not in that jersey material, at least for me. You know, the jersey it's, material. It's the same for women. It's the same exact really? thing for women. Hard pants have zippers and buttons. And when you yeah. sit down, they bite into you. You know, they're not your sweatpants or your loungy pants or your <laughs> yoga pants or hard pants. You, you know what I'm dealing with right now? And, and I wonder if I'm the only one. So uh, yesterday, I knew that Mary was going to cook dinner. She said, don't worry about it. I got it. And it was a delicious dinner. It was chicken and vegetables. And uh, it was really interesting and some rice. And so this, I found out like around four o'clock in the afternoon. So we had finished and I went, hmm, let's see. I just took a shower. So I'm going to be around her. I don't think anybody's coming around. I'm going to put on my soft pants, my loungy pants and uh, a long sleeve t-shirt. And my inside the house shoes. I, I have shoes that I only wear inside the house. <laughs> and I and this is what I was struggling with. Is this is four o'clock too early for that? Does that say you've given up, or should you show more respect to your wife by leaving on your hard pants? Right. And by the way, my hard pants are old khaki shorts, so it's not like I got a suit on. And I look like I'm going, you know, to Midtown Manhattan to do a deal. Uh, it's that and a and a like a polo shirt. And I went with it and she didn't say anything. But I just couldn't stop thinking, man, don't be that guy who at four o'clock in the afternoon, because the sun is going down a little bit earlier, all of a sudden is turning in for the night. Fight it. But sometimes, I mean, I don't do it very often, but sometimes it's been a long day and maybe you went for like a walk or a run or whatever and come home, take a shower and it's 530 in the afternoon and I'm just not putting hard pants on. <laughs> it's just not What are happening. you putting on? What are you um, putting on? Like sexy lingerie, I bet. <laughs> yeah, he wishes. He wishes. No, he, so I'll put on like, you know, sweats and a t-shirt. And he'll say to me sometimes, you know, it's just the two of us. You don't have to wear any clothes. Listen, mister. <laughs> Listen, mister. This could be the Twilight Zone episode where I'm the last person on earth and my glasses are broken and I'm still not walking around this house naked. Do you understand? <laughs> have, sure. have you ever made dinner? You know, there's just the two of you in some sexy lingerie. I've, I've seen that like in uh, pictures. I don't know where. 
but she's making, she's stirring like a spaghetti's pot and she's got sexy like lingerie on. Have you it's ever a done that? show wherever you're seeing Or just it. the fictional. apron. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or just yeah. the apron, fact, right. In fact, last night I put a DiGiorno's in the oven wearing nothing but a merry widow, some stilettos and a naughty smile. I go. knew it. I yeah. just knew it. Oh, you betcha. It. You betcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, last week, or not even, um, I'm so accident prone in the kitchen and everywhere else. The last thing I need to do is be swinging these double D's around <laughs> a hot stove <laughs> and a knife. Safety first. I like that about you. Safety first. Good. Hey, Lamar, you do all the cooking. Are you in your cheetah thong with a sassy look on your face? (laughs) No, I want everybody to have their appetite. I really do.